Hey, this is Terry B from pinballrehab.com and today we're going to talk about LEDs. This is part one in a two-part series where we'll cover the selection and usage of LEDs. In part two, we'll take those lessons and implement them on a Sega Baywatch. It's important to note there are two different types of LED bulbs. This first one uses three of what I would call the classic type LED. There are also LED bulbs available which use an SMD chip. We'll talk about the differences between these two as we proceed through the program. There's a dizzying variety of LEDs available and this is just a small selection. If you're in Europe, pinballcenter.eu carries a full line of pinball LEDs. And in America, the Ablaze brand is carried by several pinball websites. Also, cointaker.com has a wide selection of private labeled LEDs. Our first bulb is a two LED from cointaker.com, which costs 79 cents. The next step up is their four LED bulb, which costs 99 cents. Moving up in their line, they have a super LED bulb, which uses an SMD chip. And then their Ultra, which is supposedly their brightest LED, sells for $2.49. In their anti-ghosting line, they have a premium one LED, which sells for $1.59 and a premium 2 LED, which also sells for $1.59. In the Ablaze line, there's a 3 LED bulb, which works well for general insert illumination and costs 69 cents. Their anti-ghosting LED is called Ghostbuster and sells for $1.39. There's also a few special type bulbs, which you'll find very specific applications for. Uh, the first is a Frosted from Cointaker, which sells for $0.69 cents and works very well in GI lighting. The 170 bulb from Cointaker is configured so that the light is directed out rather than up and works very well in GI lighting. Our last LED is a Flex LED, which can be used in specific situations where you need to direct where the LED light is oriented. It costs $1.59, has a single SMD, and is also anti-ghosting. One of the differences between incandescent bulbs and LED bulbs is that LEDs are directional. The white bulb on the left is an incandescent bulb, and the bulb in the middle is a 4 LED from coin takers. You'll notice the light is emitted out the front of the LED and then spreads out slowly in a cone shape. The LED on the right has a single SMD chip. Although it doesn't show well in this video, it still does have that same cone effect, it's just more squat than the classic type of LED. Because of this directionality, the LED needs to be perpendicular to the insert, and the distance between the insert and the LED will also affect brightness. Normally the existing mounting hardware for the bulb works fine with an LED, but there are cases where the LED will be too close to the insert, in which case you'll get a hot spot, or the LED will be too far away from the insert, in which case you won't get the desired brightness. Our next difference is the incandescent bulb on the left provides a warm light while the standard LED in the middle provides a cool light. On the right is a warm LED, which attempts to replicate the warm light of an incandescent bulb. Because of this, warm colors like yellow, red, and orange will pop or be brighter when you're using an incandescent bulb or a warm LED. On the other hand, cool colors like green will pop more when you're using a cool or standard LED. 
In the case of inserts, where you're matching the color of the LED to the color of the insert, the cool colors, purple, blue, green, will pop a lot more than your inserts that have warm colors. In the case of GI lighting or back box lighting, you want to match cool LEDs to cool colors and warm LEDs to warm colors. Okay, let's talk about brightness. On the left, I've got a standard incandescent bulb. In the middle is a two LED bulb from Cointaker, and on the right is a three LED bulb from Ablaze. You'll notice on the Cointaker, it's got a very narrow cone, and for that reason, I don't use it. The Ablaze three LED, on the other hand, is a very good choice for inserts if you're not concerned with ghosting or flickering. Now on the left, I've got a four LED from Cointaker, and again, it has the same problem with the narrow cone. On the left now, there's a premium one LED, and as you'll note, this gives you a good comparison because the premium one LED has an SMD chip as compared to the Ablaze on the right, which has three of the classic LEDs, and they're about the same brightness. I put a Ghostbuster on the right hand side now and the two choices are about equal in brightness. I've now put a two LED premium from Cointaker on the right hand side and as you probably could guess it's brighter than the single LED. Either the Ghostbuster or either one of the premiums, the one LED or the two LED, are good choices for inserts where you're concerned about ghosting or flickering. In the case of back box or GI lighting, we need to overcome the directionality of LED. So I use either the 170 from Cointaker on the left or the Frosted from Cointaker on the right. Both are good solutions. When you've got an insert bulb that's mounted horizontally to the play field instead of perpendicular, you need to use a flex LED. You can see here where because of the directionality of the LED, the standard LED, all the light heads off in the wrong direction. And by aiming the flex LED, you can get the light directed up towards the insert. For more information on pinball LEDs, check out pinballrehab.com and put LED in the search box.